To this point, we have said rather little about the role of the government in the economy. But the role of government is highly important. It is critical for a smooth functioning of the economy. It is critical both in the sense of helping the economy to operate in an efficient manner and also helping the economy to operate in an equitable manner. We could describe three broad functions for government in the modern economy. The first function of government that is important in our economic perspective is that the government can provide a legal framework in which producers and consumers in the economy interact with one another. So a legal framework is critical for the successful organization of, economy, of an economy. If we did not have a proper legal framework, if we did not have a judicial system, if we did not have a police system, then there is no guarantee that contracts would be observed and it would be much more difficult for us to take advantage of specialization if there is no guarantee that the um, agreements would, would be adhered to at the end of the day. So it is critical that the government provide a stable legal environment in which producers and consumers can interact one with another and one in which producers can interact with overseas uh, buyers and one in which importers can interact with overseas producers. Domestically, the government seeks to improve the efficiency with which the economy operates. It has competition policy and regulatory frameworks. Governments try to limit monopolies as much as possible and that is why we have competition policy. We have regulatory frameworks which mean, means that the government set out, sets out standards that products which are made in Canada must meet if they are to go into the marketplace. The government also sees that it has an obligation in providing, for example, an educated workforce. An economy will function much better if its workforce is educated than if it is not educated. The government also seeks to ensure that we are able to trade as an economy relatively freely with other economies in the trading world. By trading with other economies, we can take advantage of their um, ability to specialize in goods and services which they produce efficiently. Likewise, a solid international agreement or a solid international understanding enables Canadian producers to be able to export their goods and services to the international market. So the government has a critical role to play in ensuring a stable trading environment. And of course the government uh, also is in charge of the central bank and therefore in control of monetary policy and the government also spends our tax dollars so it is in control of fiscal policy and both monetary and fiscal policy as you will see in macroeconomics are critical in ensuring stability and economic growth. So these are ways in which the government can ensure an efficient functioning of the market. The third major way in which the government intervenes in the economy is to ensure that there is a degree of equity in the economy. And to that end, the government redistributes to individuals and to other levels of government. For example, people who are unemployed receive employment insurance. People who are working during their lifetime are required to contribute to their Canada or Quebec pension plan and they receive a pension when they are retired. The government also redistributes not just to individuals through these programs and through, for example, social assistance, also known as welfare. Governments also redistribute to different regions or between the different regions in Canada's economy. Most governments have an economy where some regions are very prosperous and other regions are less so. And typically what governments do is they take some of the tax revenue that is generated by the prosperous regions and redistribute some of that to the less prosperous regions. So governments redistribute both to individuals and to other levels of government. To summarize this very brief statement on the role of government, 
The government provides us with economic stability through the provision of a legal framework and a policing of that framework. It seeks to ensure in a variety of ways that the economy operates in an efficient manner and therefore that the potential of the economy is released. And third, it, inter it intervenes in the economy in such a way as to ensure that we have a somewhat equitable set of outcomes in the economy by redistributing economic resources to individuals and to other levels of government and other regions in the economy where the economic potential is lower. At the beginning of lesson one, we proposed a definition for economics. We said that it was a set of ideas and policies for the betterment of society. And it also involved a study of methods that are appropriate for the development of those ideas. And this definition was given to us by a recent Nobel laureate. So if this is our working definition of economics, how can we support the attainment of this goal? Most economists think that markets are critical. Why are markets critical? Well, they permit trade, they encourage us to specialize, and therefore result in an efficient operation of the economy. If markets are to work well, incentives matter. That is because economic agents, whether they're consumers or producers, react to incentives. If there is a reward for participating in a certain activity, if there is a reward for supplying a certain good, then economic agents are likely to be motivated to supply the goods or products in question. So incentives matter. If incentives are put in front of people, they will react in a predictable way. The a third belief or a third standpoint in support of this definition of economics is that governments are critical. And this is the point we made just a moment ago. Governments are critical for the stable operation of the economy through the legal institutions and the police institutions that government can provide. Governments can also provide for an efficient operation of the economy by ensuring, for example, that monopolies don't predominate, by ensuring that there is relatively free trade with other economies, and so forth. And lastly, governments are there to ensure that we have an equitable set of outcomes. If we have a highly inequitable set of outcomes, then we must ask ourselves if our economy is working for the betterment of all of society or just for a part of it.